That's right. It's a Bike TV special report. I'm Clarence. Um, I'm standing here at the corner of Clinton and uh, Lucur Street in Carroll Gardens. And you're probably wondering why I'm wearing a t-shirt and pair of shorts on the day of January 29th at dusk. Well, it just happened to get to almost 70 degrees today. And uh, we here at Bike TV, we're planning to do a uh, special report on bike lanes in the city. Uh, you know, what's, what's going right with them, what's going wrong, uh, the state of repair, uh, hazards, uh, safety concerns, things like that. So uh, we were going to do that sometime in March or April. However, since it was so balmy and beautiful um, and I had a day off, I decided to take uh, a spin today and chart a course from my house here in Cow Gardens uh, all the way to Macy's uh, Herald Square area and back using mostly bicycle lanes. And uh, as you'll see, our report found that there was some good, there's some bad, but there was mostly ugly. Take a look. First up was the Union Street bike lane. Unfortunately, Union, like many bike lanes in Brooklyn, is ignored and infrequently painted or restriped, leaving it badly marked. If it weren't for the bike lane signs, it'd be hard to tell what the dash lines mean. Since many cyclists from West Brooklyn and Manhattan use this as their route to reach Prospect Park, it shouldn't be in such bad shape. But worse was yet to come. I used Union for a few blocks to get to Smith, which I rode to the Adams Street bike lane. It is marked on New York City bike maps, but it's more like a parking lot. Watch what happens as you round the corner to enter the bike lane. That's right, wall-to-wall -wall cars. Cars ignoring the Belgian block lined bike lane and signage. Most of these were police vehicles, court vehicles, city vehicles, private cars, most with city or police permits in the window. Cabs and limos from the Marriott fill the bike lane as well, even though there is a no-standing sign right in front of the hotel. Cars even brazenly block the crosswalks, forcing pedestrians to alter their natural crossing path. It's an accident just waiting to happen. At a Community Board 2 meeting a few years back, a number of cyclists asked why bollards couldn't be used to keep cars from parking in the Adams Street bike lane. Representatives from DOT said that plastic bollards were not feasible in the area, yet bollards were perfectly fine to be used to separate cars mere feet from the beginning of the path. I wondered, why are bollards fine for people driving around in relative safety inside their 4,000-pound vehicles, but not allowed for extremely vulnerable cyclists riding a 30-pound bike? It's absurd. The Adams Street bike lane is just indicative of what happens without enforcement by the city. Here is an integral route to get to the Brooklyn Bridge, one that thousands of cyclists a day would use. But cyclists aren't stupid. They find safer alternatives on their own. But then the officials complain that nobody's using the bike lanes. Just how are we supposed to encourage safe cycling in this city when this is what a bike lane looks like every day? In one word, it's disgusting. Once you navigate your way onto the Brooklyn Bridge, you'll get a safe, traffic-free ride across. The newly configured exit from the bridge features a nifty bike box, but looking down center, once again, the lane is blocked car by car, this time in the shadow of City Hall. However, to my surprise, the approach coming from the north was marked with cones, just the solution needed on Adams Street in Brooklyn, even if only temporary. I headed north past the courts on Center Street, where the lane was once again blocked by cars, which I expected. One mile later was the Lafayette bike lane. This lane was the first ever in the city painted with a null zone, intended to create a safety buffer between cyclists and cars. I counted about a dozen vehicles blocking the lane during the mile-long stretch, but I've generally found this lane to be fairly useful. The buffer seems to draw people to double park in it sometimes, but some, like this UPS driver, parks perfectly in the zone. Next up was the 6th Avenue bike lane. Crowded, narrow, dangerous, always blocked by vehicles. Drivers who cut you off, simply a nightmare. A must to avoid if you can. But 6th Avenue discharges into Herald Square, where the city has made some impressive bike and pedestrian improvements. None more so than this separated bike lane, which runs for only one block, but shows what the city could do if it really flexed its muscles. Plastic bollards give the cyclists a chance to make it through the crowded area with little problems. There's additional space for peds, and the cars are forced to stay in their driving lanes. This should be a model for the city wide. I headed back towards Brooklyn using the Broadway bike lane south between 34th and 16th. It's marked by numerous large hazards and parked cars. Feel the jitters as my camera hits the potholes. Now I'm on the 5th Avenue bike lane, and there weren't too many cars to contend with, which I was surprised by. But there were a number of hazards that are typical to daily cyclists. Here at the intersection of 15th is a metal plate badly secured with all sorts of rubble and rocks strewn about it. As you can see, the bike lane is useless, forcing cyclists to detour into driver lanes. So I checked out one of the newer lanes in Manhattan, the 2nd Avenue bike lane. 
This lane, like the one on Lafayette, has a buffer, but it's notorious for being occupied by double and even triple parkers. I fought my way to the Manhattan Bridge through some of Chinatown's worst traffic. The access point is problematic. The city installed these stop signs to force turning vehicles to yield to cyclists and pedestrians, but they go largely ignored. I filmed this gentleman while he waited to cross, and finally, after about a dozen vehicles, he was given the go-ahead by this law-abiding bus driver. The Manhattan Bridge is a better alternative for the cyclists than Brooklyn. It is preferable because there's much less crowd and has a smaller degree of climb. However, the secret's slowly leaking out. On my way over at 3 p.m., I saw about a dozen cyclists. To finally return to my neighborhood in Carroll Gardens, I used the Henry Street bike lane, which I regard as probably the worst kept bike lane in the entire city. This despite it being an integral link. For years, it has been marked by huge holes, uneven pavement, and hazards like those seen here. The bike lane is unrecognizable for stretches. The entire block has the faintest marks of a bike lane. Trust me, this is one. The only saving grace is the one block painted south of Atlantic. It is wider and colored blue, a trial project of the long-delayed downtown Brooklyn traffic calming project. It'd be nice if more lanes looked like this. For example, I've never seen a car parked in this section since it was made blue. However, in the can't, you can't get everything right department, the blue material is made of an odd, slightly sticky substance that seems to attract trash and dirt, making the lane dangerous with lots of pieces of debris and glass. Still, I think many cyclists would welcome these safety improvements. So there you have it. That's uh, our 2002 report on bicycle lanes. And we're going to try to do one of these every year just to keep the city honest and to you know show them what some of the miserable conditions we have to put up with just to commute and, uh, and live our daily lives as cyclists. Um, I give my overall experience as an experienced cyclist uh, about a C. Um, you know, there could be a lot of room for improvement, but as far as uh, if I were a beginning cyclist or uh, was, you know, thinking that these lanes would motivate anybody to do anything, as far, you know, from that perspective, it's probably about an F, and that's pretty sad.